everyone welcome back this is Vivek Bharata in this video we'll be covering what exactly is Kafka and the core fundamental concepts that every developer should know let's get started so what exactly is Kafka in simple terms it's a distributed event store and real-time streaming platform that's it what exactly is an event store let's consider an example where an e whereas in an e-commerce e site once the user logs in, so user logged in is an event, right? And also let's say user placed an order. So order creation in the backend, you can treat that as one event, right? And then later order placed and all this. So any, any data change can be treated as an event and we can capture those and send it to Kafka. And from there, we can actually streamline in a way that it can be consumed by different microservices to process that specific data. Let's say order is created and once order is confirmed, a mailer service let's say that can be consumed this order placed event and it can trigger to send an email to the specific user with an order confirmation details that's it so it can act as a message broker so this is like a one simple example where Kafka can be used it is actually developed by LinkedIn as an in-house tool to track user activity and different sorts of analytics now let's move on to a simple demonstration where exactly how data flows from producer to consumer via Kafka so in a simple terms, producer sends these different messages to broker, okay? And on the other side, we have a set of consumers. If you see this representation in blue color, so this specific consumer, and there are multiple as, a, as this representation conveys. So you can treat this as a consumer group. That also I will cover shortly. So for now, this is one simple consumer, assume, okay? Now this consumer can pull the messages from this broker to be precise from this specific topic. So this blue color represents one topic as an example. So overall we have three topics total. One is blue, one is red and the other is black, right? So we, as an example here, we have three different messages which sends to, where producer sends these specific messages to only that specific topics, okay? So as soon as the producer sends this red message to the broker to that specific red topic inside the broker, that will be consumed only by this specific consumer group or a consumer in a simple terms and this one will be consumed only from the blue topic and if you see here as it's a self-explanatory so one consumer can actually consume messages from different topics so this specific consumer group is consuming messages from black and red topic that's it so producer keeps sending the messages to broker via a specific pointing to a specific topic and consumers can actually consume the messages from those topics. That's it. And very important point over here is once the message is consumed by consumer, the specific message won't be deleted from the topic. By default, there is a, so there is a retention time where Kafka will still hold the messages in the topics for seven days as, as by default configuration that can be tweaked to a year, month, whatever up to your business logic overall. So again, to iterate, once the message is consumed, the message won't be removed from the topic. It will stay as per their retention time configuration. That's it. Okay. Before moving on to the core blocks like producers and consumers, let's start with this specific message. So what exactly message contains? So in Kafka, a message can also be termed as event or a record. So on high level, we have three different fundamental blocks inside a message. First one is headers where it holds all the meta information, including the topic name, etc. So next one is key, which is optional, but most of the times it will be used in real world applications. I'll just cover what exactly is key soon in the next slide. Next up is value self-explanatory. Whatever the information you want to send in that specific message will be stored in this value. That's it. Total, we have three main blocks, headers, keys, and value inside each record. Okay. Now let's move on to topics and partitions. So what are topics? Topics you can treat as a categories like order created. So that can be treated as one topic, order updated, order dispatched. All these can be treated, treated as categories, right? So each category can be referred to as a topic name. That's it. And these topics are act as a middleman between producers where producers send messages to topics and, and consumers read data from these topics. Okay, this is clear. Then what exactly these small blocks inside this topic A? So these are called partitions. So in this representation, I define it as P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. So what is the importance of these? Partitions helps in load balancing, especially for a heavy load. How exactly that works is let's say there is a big topic and we are pushing 100 million messages per day as an example okay remember i mentioned about the key in the record earlier so based on the specific key 
Kafka will decide where to put that specific message. So let's consider a simple way. There are like 50 messages overall. So to even out, 10 messages will be sent to one specific partition, then the next 10 or something like this. So it will be evenly distributed if you are not sending any key in the record. Okay. But let's say if the producer is sending a specific key, let's say in our case, as an example, order created is a topic, right? So whenever user places an order, there will be an event as order created with all the information inside the value object. Adding to that, producer will send key as user ID. So no matter what, at any point of time, whenever the producer is sending messages with that specific key user ID, let's say user ID one, then so Kafka will basically uh, create a hash of, of that key key value and it will divide by the number of partitions we have over here and based on that it, it just push that specific message to that specific partition that's it so if there is user 2 or user 3 based on the hash and the number of uh, partitions over here it will resolve to maybe p4 or p5 it can vary so it will be distributed again based on these logics so the advantage of this is it will be distributed across all the partitions and the consumers basically consume from a specific partition i'll just come to that in the next slide another advantage is parallelism where based on the load and the key definition all the 100 million or 50 million messages will be spread across these partitions and consumers can process these messages from these partitions in parallel that is very advantageous if you're thinking in a very high volume data and another advantage of these partitions is as the messages will end up into specific partition based on the key if the key is defined again order will be persisted so if there are like 15 messages for a user id as an example it will end up in p1 only right for the specific user id if there is another user ID, it might end up in other partitions okay so let's say for one specific user id it will end up in this p1 partition so kafka will ensure that ordering of messages per partition will be always same so there won't be any issues in ordering of messages at partition level as an example we have another topic b where if we define it as only four partitions so no matter so based on the key or if the key is not there based on the load those messages will be allocated to these partitions that's it i hope till this part it is clear if you think this video is helpful so far make sure you hit that like button and subscribe moving on to the next one that is kafka producer so earlier we discussed about topics right now as an example let's say we have producer client 1 and producer client 2 and basically this is like an order service okay so order service whenever there is an event of order creation or order completed if you see this specific producer client 1 it can whenever it sends based on the user id as a key let's say so each message can end up in different partitions so that's the pictorial representation over here and over here also there is another producer client too it can be order service or usually it's an order service because in this case it's binded to order created and order completed right so like multiple instances of it so this specific producer client too can also send again to order created and if the order is completed the same producer can send to order completed also also so if you see here the arrow marks if you see from producer client the messages can spread to p1 so if, so for the p1 in topic b in order completed topic producer 1 client and producer cl producer 1 and producer 2 can send to same partition so don't get confused that is fine the reason it can send to same partition because if the key is sent and if the key has a value which is a user id it is same all right that's all on high level what exactly the producer is more to kafka consumers if you see the image over here which is an extension to this part on the right side we have just added a few more blocks so that is order processor and inventory manager as an example and we have this dotted box as consumer groups so what exactly is a consumer group in simple terms it is a group of consumers that will basically cooperate to balance the load across this whole topic and ensure fault tolerance and inside we have three blocks in this consumer group these are consumers kafka consumer so what exactly is a kafka consumer in simple terms it is a client application that reads messages from these topic partitions if you see the arrows direction here it's a push mechanism producer sends messages to the topics right and in respect to, to consumer it's a pull mechanism it is not a push from the topic so topics don't push messages to consumers consumers will pull messages from the topic simple 
Now there is one another detail which is again very important that is if you see here there are small vertical lines or boxes in the specific partition right so what are those these are called offsets so what is offset offset in simple terms it's a unique identifier for a message within a kafka partition that allows consumers to keep track of which messages have been processed so as an example this specific consumer one is consuming messages from partition p1 right so let's say this offset value is 2 so once the consumer one starts consuming from offset value 2 and once it's processed consumer one can commit the offset so what is committing is nothing but it will increment the offset and consumer one can consume the message at offset value 3 and once it's processed it will commit and the offset value will be 4 and consumer one will start processing the message at offset 4 you can treat this as a position or an index value and there is another detail over here so in this consumer group we have only three consumers but in this order created topic we have total five topics so there is an imbalance so consumer group will take care of assigning other other leftover partitions to an existing consumers so let's say as an example there is some issue on the consumer 3 and it got killed so another consumer will start by and also by, by any chance if consumer 3 got permanently shut down in that case this specific partition which is allocated to consumer 3 will be reassigned to another consumer that's it and if you see in a simple terms Con in, a, in, in a specific consumer group the number of consumers are limited to the number of partitions so let's say in this case we have five partitions so the consumer group can't be six reason at any point of time one specific partition can be assigned to one single consumer okay this specific partition cannot be consumed from multiple consumers clear uh, don't get confused with these arrows because this specific consumer one is consuming messages from different partitions but but not the other way around as in like this specific partition this is p4 this p4 is consuming from consumer one but not again the same p4 is not being consumed from consumed from consumer three but multiple consumers so to sum it up one single consumer can consume from multiple partitions but one partition can't be consumed from multiple consumers i hope this is clear and it also makes sense if you see order is very important so consumer group and a whole kafka will make sure that whenever you are committing the offset and uh, processing the messages the order will be persistent and, and that is one of the main primary advantages of kafka order persistence now in this example if you see there is order completed right inventory manager is another service microservice as an example and this is a consumer group now we have consumer 1 and consumer 3 right so ignore this consumer 3 and this dotted line okay at at an initial stage let's say we have only two consumers consumer 1 and consumer 2 so in that case first partition will be assigned to consumer 1 second partition consumer 2 as we have two more partitions consumer group will pick another another partition and assign it to consumer 1 and the fourth partition assign it to consumer 2 okay now if you spin up another consumer 3 as part of the same consumer group then either of this partition will be deallocated uh, deassigned from this consumer existing consumer 1 and it will be assigned to consumer 3 so in this case p3 will be consumed by consumer 3 only that's it I hope this is clear but still I just want to emphasize on one specific thingy I just want to reiterate again single partition in a topic cannot be consumed by multiple consumers in the same consumer group okay but it can be consumed from this consumer one of a different consumer group okay so this specific consumer one from this consumer group can actually consume messages from this topic and based on the selection and all all these partitions can be assigned to these consumers okay but same consumer can consume from different partitions okay that's it i don't want to reiterate for the third time but i hope this is clear moving on to the next slide that is kafka cluster a kafka cluster refers to a group of one or more servers which are brokers 
working together to manage data ingestion, storage and processing and coordinating the brokers. So inside this broker will have all the topics, partitions replicated. So at any point of time, if one broker got crashed, another broker will be elected as a leader. So the primary broker instance can be switched to another instances. That's it. So the data can be still be flowing across from producer to topic partition and to the consumer. Earlier Kafka used to rely on Zookeeper, which keeps track of which brokers are part of the Kafka cluster. It is mainly used by the brokers to determine which broker is the leader of a given partition and topic and perform leader elections. New version we have Kraft. I'm not sure whether that's the right way to pronounce, but let's call it Kraft. And this is an in-house tool which is developed by Kafka to remove an external dependency of Zookeeper. That's pretty much it on high level, the fundamental concepts of Kafka. Let's cover some use cases. First one is messaging. Kafka works well as a replacement for a more traditional message broker. As an example to decouple processing blocks from the producers and make it as an asynchronous operations and all that stuff between the whole microservices. Next one is website activity tracking. This is the original use case of Kafka when it was developed in LinkedIn. So it is able to rebuild a user activity tracking as a set of real time published subscribe feeds. Moving on to the next one that is metrics. Kafka is often used for operational monitoring data. This involves aggregating statistics from distributed systems to produce centralized feeds of operational data. Next up is log aggregation. So instead of collecting all flat files from the servers, we can feed into the Kafka and from there you can aggregate all the logs and store it as a central repository. Next one is stream processing. In few of the cases, data is processed in different multiple stages where for example, where raw input is captured from the IoT devices, from there it will transform and do some validations at different stages and fine tune with some other uh, models. So all these transformations are carried out with Kafka streams and overall it's a stream processing and all these happens by transforming the data across different topics and the next one more often used is event sourcing it is a style of application design where state changes are logged as a time ordered sequence of records kafka supports for very large storage of data making it an excellent backend for an application which are built in this design that's all for this video covering the fundamental concepts of kafka I hope this video is helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you love this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.